welcome to my life. Guys, hello, it's Jeff from Home Run Vision DIY here today. Today is kind of fun. We're doing a sneak peek. We are gonna go on a tour of the house, show you what's going on. The videos just started coming out. I'm probably the only YouTuber on the planet who films one or two months of an advance just because, well, I'm a family man, right? I got four kids, life happens, and I like to have a little bit of a buffer. We learned a lot through the pandemic and even before that. Remember our, our camera guy, Max, he had an accident and, and he wasn't able to film for a couple months. If we had not been the kind of guys who filmed in advance, our channel would have been empty for two months. So what we do is we maintain that tradition. We're way in advance, so you guys are seeing what's going on on the outside of the house, but the inside has been working for months. We wanted to share that with you today. Let's just say hi to everybody. Yinzer House, Pittsburgh is in the house. Great to have you with us tonight. <sighs> we are gonna have a lot of fun, guys. Um, we're gonna talk about the decisions we made, the products we're using, uh, the trouble we ran into, right? The th things to consider if you're ever gonna go look at becoming a snowbird and buying a house down here in Florida. Uh, how much this cost house, how, ha, this cost house, how much the house cost, right? We're gonna talk about a whole lot of stuff. Everybody's jumping in the chat. We're gonna wait a couple minutes before we get there. We wanna make sure that we do the tour live with as many people who are joining as possible. Today, we're gonna to do the tour. We're gonna to answer some questions about the project, okay? Um, I'm gonna share with you my favorite question from the members forum this week, okay? Because there's, there's a lot of stuff that you guys can learn from me answering these member forum questions. And if you're not aware of it, yes, we have a membership. Yes, you can ask me questions direct. Yes, I can help coach you through the most difficult times in your construction life. I'd love to help, okay? This is my thing. Quebec City's in the house. Western Canada is here. In the middle of the afternoon, Matthias is here at two o'clock on his time. That's nice. Good for him. Um, we are going to have an absolute blast. Yeah, there we go. And then Alabama's in the house, Colorado. You know, it never ceases to amaze me how many people from so many different places are coming into this show. This is a lot of fun. I love doing it. Hopefully, Today, we're gonna to do three things. We're going to be able to encourage you. We're gonna be able to educate you. We're gonna have a little bit of fun. And maybe a fourth thing, maybe just maybe we'll inspire you to become a DIYer, right? At the end of the day, if you take the time to learn the skills and, and are willing to practice and fail and do it right the second time sometimes, and that's, that's true, right? You can become totally self-sufficient and you can, walk away from the entire marketplace and not have anything to do with anybody else. Or you could learn how to hire people that are on this channel, learning stuff, developing skills and starting small businesses on the side and you can hire them. But we got Norway in the house, Tennessee, Arkansas, Michigan, <laughs> Portugal. My goodness. I know it's exciting, right? We're all around the world. Today we're talking double wide trailers. Now my trailer is actually a bit of a gem. I picked it on purpose because it was sexy, all right? I got a sexy double wide. This sucker is a beast. It's 1,350 square foot, two bed, two bath. It's got three car parking, had three car parking. We've made a minor adjustment so that we've added some outdoor living space. We're gonna show that to you today. We've got a master bed ensuite, all right? Blow your mind. We're gonna show you today. The bathroom's pretty much finished. The only thing missing is the vanity. It should have been delivered yesterday. It's not here. I'm freaking out because I'm going back to Canada in two weeks. <laughs> I got to get this bathroom finished so I can show you the video series. All right. Iowa, New York, everybody's in the house. Richmond, Virginia, Southwest Indiana. All right, guys, I think we're ready. For everybody who's going to be late to the tour, you're going to have to rewatch this. That's fine. Let's just go. Let's go take a look outside. We're going to go outside now, and we're going to take a tour right from the top, right from the beginning, things you've seen, and then we're going to show you everything you haven't seen. And here we go. Our tech is amazing, by the way. We've been doing live shows for the last couple months consistently. We've been learning a lot. We've been practicing a lot. Developing new strategies. We've got new technology. We've got new hardware, new software. Here we go. So here's outside my house. This is the infamous slab. You all saw this video. It just came out. It's already at a quarter million views. Is it perfect? No. Can I walk on it? Yes. That's the point of DIY. Look at, before you would come out of your car, 
And this is all the space that was given for you to get around that handrail and get into the house. That was stupid. Now I've got room to actually walk my groceries into the house without going through the mud. And that was the whole goal. Don't track outside inside. We did a little lovely garden here, right? Change the light post, change the handrail, change the door. Now, come on. Let's go inside. We'll show you the goods, the stuff you haven't seen, the sneak peek, the behind the scenes that no one has shown you yet. This is a front hall. It is still 1984. It's disgusting. We're going to get there. We did a series on how to repaint the door. This was ugly commercial brown. Changed the hardware. Redid some stuff. This was a great video series. Now, welcome to my house. This is what 1,350 square feet looks like. I've got a vaulted ceiling, okay? Not every double wide trail in the world has a vaulted ceiling. That's why we bought this, because it's sexy. Vaulted ceiling gives the illusion of space, right? It's amazing. Here are the infamous windows. We changed all these out. Now, the reason they're open right now is because our air conditioning died today. <laughs> we were filming. We were baking in the heat. It was just nasty. It's raining in the humidity. Oh, Florida, the end of June is not a forgiving monster. But anyway, the cool air is coming. We're getting a fresh breeze now. We'll be fine. We did a video on how to trim out your windows, okay? It's going to be incredibly helpful because take a look. All these windows all across the top, completely level. There's not a fly in that wall, all right? That's awesome. We painted this wall live in a show a couple months ago, if you want to know. The entire house had to have new subfloor. That was unexpected. We did not see that coming. Turns out that the subfloor that was installed in 1984 was rated for a 20 year construction technology because it's called a temporary structure. They don't have to do a 50 year build. That's the way we build most houses to last at least 50. That's what an engineer stamp is for. But here they cut corners and they put cardboard in for a subfloor. It was getting soft and bowing all over the place. So even though the floor was only two years old in this house, it had to be all ripped out and we had to put a brand new subfloor in which means we needed a brand new floor. So, welcome to no transition, vinyl 50 some odd feet down the hallway, not a single transition in this house, and I'll tell you why. You buy the right product, you can install it correctly. The product I use, you can install forward, backwards, left, right, solve all your problems. We've got a video coming up on that. It's gonna change the world to understand. It's not about the quality of the product, it's the design of the product that gives you the ability to install like this. Here's my kitchen, all right? Now, <laughs> I gotta just say, this area right here, let's just talk about this. I got a post. This is one half of my double wide, this is the other half of my double wide, all right? This used to be a countertop, and then a wall, and then upper cabinets. We got rid of it, because this becomes a natural hallway. Before, you had to walk around the other side of the post into the dining room, which meant the dining room was too small to put a table. That was stupid. So we just said, forget it. Get rid of it. We're done. We painted all the cabinets. I bought new doors. And that's the key to an old house when you're painting cabinets. Buy new doors. They're very affordable. Okay? They come in, in maple and hard panel, and you can spray them and paint them and install with the same style of hinge in the existing location. It's a really easy, simple DIY. We're making that video. We're putting in butcher block through the whole kitchen. Not because it's the best option, because it's the best DIY option. Anybody watching this video, you can do butcher block countertops. We're going to do that process. It's going to change your world because you don't have to go granite. You don't have to buy Formica and pay five times what it's worth and have it installed. You can buy your own butcher block. There are suppliers locally and regionally. You can get it all over the place right now. This is a great option. And by the way, can I just say this floor? It's crazy sexy, all right? This floor locks together like, I mean, I need an analogy. I'll come back to that. But that's amazing. Now, here's our hallway. We've changed out a couple of lights. Let me just show you this. This is the office, right? And we've just started on this. So we've cleaned it up. We've put out the new subfloor. We've painted the cabinets. The walls and the ceiling have to be finished. But check this out. This is what you're going to see coming up the next couple of weeks. 300 square feet of outdoor living space, all right? The old wall used to be here, and this was just a little cubby. We moved it. We said, forget that. Now the window to the kitchen can be open, and you can talk to people who are hanging out out here if you're in the kitchen busy. We put in a facade with a new door, new windows, new vinyl siding. We changed all the screens. I have 350 square feet of outdoor living space 
when you're in Florida from anywhere from November to like May, this is beautiful, right? Every evening is beautiful out here. We're going to do another video. We're going to show you how to paint this sucker too. And we'll change this door one step at a time. We can't do everything at once. There we go. Now we got a second bedroom. I'm not going to show you. It's my storage room. That's where all my crap goes. And in here is the bathroom. We haven't touched it yet. I'm not going to waste showing you that, but come on into here. Here's the ensuite bedroom. Vaulted ceiling again, baby. Looks amazing. All right. Now check out this floor. Still no transitions. Right? This is amazing. What we did is we had sliding closet doors. We repurposed them. We reframed. We had to lift everything up three quarters of an inch because of the new subfloor. We built our own closet system. I got uppers and lowers. All right. We're going to do a couple shelves. We're going to finish trimming this out. It's going to be amazing. I did a video over here. This is the exterior wall. In this particular house, they had quarter inch vinyl drywall. And so what I did is I actually took out all the wooden straps that were on there. I used a quick set mud. I show you how to do this with a knockdown texture and then how to paint it. Changes the whole dynamic of the room, right? Because now I got an accent wall with some texture. And texture is amazing in design. When you got texture, you've got separation and it really gives you a life. Now check this out. Here's our bathroom. Now this bathroom was originally a tub, a sink, a toilet, and a shower. The shower was a plastic wall surround. It was this big. The tub was a stupid little 12 inch off the ground, little, little tub built in. And the vanity was built in all the way to the other end of the wall. The only thing we did here is we saved this, this light box. Okay. We tiled the wall. We're adding wallpaper. We made a custom walk-in shower. I got a shelf over here. I've got a quick drain floor installation with this bench built in. Absolutely amazing. And then over here, huh? Who doesn't want to have a soaker tub in their bathroom? Show me a double wide anywhere in the world with a tub set up and a shower set up like this. <laughs> the truth is, as a DIYer, the material cost is the only cost. You can make your absolute most beautiful bathroom ever for just a couple thousand bucks. This is the power of DIY, guys. All right? And here we go. And the reason I'm showing you all this is because I want to inspire you. I want you to realize that even a double wide trailer with a small investment can become a thing of beauty. Now, let's get back out here. I want to get back in the chat because while I'm walking around, I can't read nothing. I don't know what's going on. Nothing wrong with that. All right? Uh, who knows? If things go well, maybe later tonight we'll even take some phone calls. Now we're back. Here we go. Look at this. This is so much fun. I am loving it. Oh. You know what, Tammy? You're wrong. It's not Schluter. It's called Quick Drain. It's a new product on the market. I was at KBIS this year. And you know, I generally preach I'm not into new technology, right? I like to let everybody else be an experiment. But the technology that they developed and the system they developed made it possible for me to install a shower in an existing shower without getting a permit because we're not breaking any rules by adding the drain and relocating it and building up the base. There's so much going on there. You're going to be absolutely amazed. That product has a density of foam that is so amazing. You can drive a screw in it and it'll hold. So you build your shower like as if you're building with wood and everything is pre-sloped. It'll change the market. I'm telling you right now. Okay, so Jeff wants to know what's the cost of materials and blah, blah, blah. blah. Y'all know I started this project. I came from Canada. The only thing I brought was my air compressor in case I got a flat tire, a couple of hand tools. So far on this project, we're $21,000 in. Now, I bought the vanity. I bought the whole bathroom. I bought all the flooring. I bought the countertops. I bought all my tile. Because, yes, we're tiling the other bathroom. That's purchased. We're tiling the office. That's purchased. We did all of the trims, all of the paintwork, all of the flooring, all the subflooring. Plumbing fixtures, all the outside, all of the paint, all the windows, all the doors, all the rebuilding of the three-season room. It's about 20, 21,000 right now. Not bad, right? Not freaking bad. Now, I understand this is a, a, it's a trailer, right? It, it's, it's basically a double wide. I'm not going to make a fortune on this project. 
What I am gonna do is make this double wide amazing for another 30 years for somebody to live absolutely dirt cheap on the dollar. Because a mortgage on this property when it's sold is so low, it's so affordable. Just because you don't live in a, in a, in a 2,000 square foot home doesn't mean you can't have great amenities, right? DIYers have the power to live in whatever comfort level they want because materials are not that expensive. It's the bloody labor and taxes that kill every project. All right, here we go. Let's jump into some questions here. Ah, oh, where are we going? Uh, just say Bobby. Bobby, does that wallpaper in the shower have to have a special waterproofing? Okay, so what, the, the wallpaper in the, the, around the tub is vinyl, all right? So it's a vinyl wallpaper, and at the base, we do put a silicone seal in case of splashing, but that's it. The tile, sorry, the shower itself is all tile, okay? I did a, a, a cement fiber board, I used a waterproofing system, and then I used a waterproofing system. And I'm gonna show you my shower system, the most waterproof shower system on the market. No warranty, because the products that I combine to make that shower don't talk to each other, they hate each other, they're in competition but I've devised the most comprehensive waterproofing system on the market today, guaranteed to never fail. I don't care how often you leave the damn water running. So we're gonna share that with you too. Next question, uh, the cost of renovations. Oh, Chef, yeah, I just answered that, about 21,000. Now this is tools, I, I bought basic tools. I got a drill, I got a skill saw, I got a really cheap chop saw and a, and a table saw. Harbor Freight Tools, man, a grinder, right, a, 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 a drill. <sighs> what do you do? Harbor Freight Tools are, they're effective. They do the job, okay? They're missing some nuances, but if you're on a budget, there's no shame in going to Harbor Freight and buying tools. Let me just say that. Ha, <laughs> Red Guard for the waterproofing. Okay, you know what, Bandit, you're right. It's one of the elements, but it's not the only thing. Now. Let's go here. We can't get parts for mobile homes at your local hardware store. No, you can't. So I live in central Florida and I've got a store here called um, the home, the mobile home depot. That's what it is. Okay. And they've been great. They're great folks. They had all the windows in stock. They got everything else in stock. The doors are in stock. There's another place called Pat's, our, our, our supply store. If you just Google, for um, mobile home suppliers in your area, you should find somebody. It's an industry, it exists. Most of these windows are stock items, okay? So don't be afraid to do a little Google, do a little research, even if you have to drive out of your city or county. Um, getting things that are in stock means that they're a lot cheaper than if you custom order, right? So it's worth the drive. Uh, I got a question, do you use special paint for the cabinets? I'm thinking of repainting the cabinets in my lake cabin. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I use a special paint for everything. I got a paint for ceilings. I got a paint for primer. I got a paint for drywall primer. I got a paint for trim. I got a paint for walls. I got a paint for walls where I don't want to have it shiny. I got a paint for cabinets. It's an enamel based paint designed for cabinets. I got it from Sherwin Williams. Full disclosure, no sponsors on this video series. I, what I did is I shopped around. And I got the best deals I could find locally, okay? I opened up a Sherwin-Williams paint account. I'm officially a contractor at Sherwin-Williams, so I've got a great deal. I'm paying about 40% off for all my paint. You should too. Consider that. All I did was give them my name, phone number, and address, opened up the account, and I asked them to give me a good deal on their super paint for interior and exterior because they will give you special pricing on your most common purchases. That's how I set it up. You can too. Why pay $65, $70 a gallon for bare at Home Depot, which is super thick and requires an extra gallon of paint to help you get the coverage you want, when you can go and get $38 a gallon from Sherwin-Williams, right? This is what I'm saying. All right. Pittsburgh, did you cock that expansion gap outside of the new walkway or put any sealer on it? Keep it basic. <laughs> I haven't done squat, all right? I am actually not a concrete guy. I'm just experimenting with it. What I'm planning on doing is I'm going back to Ottawa for about eight weeks, okay? Because people have been asking me what's going on with the church. I'm cleaning it out. I'm putting it on the market. 
but we're going to do uh, a couple of videos while we're there. We're going to do another shed video. The market has changed. The rules have changed. We can do 12 by 16, so we're going to do one, and we're going to have some fun trying to make it as cheap as possible and sturdy and strong as possible, and I think it's going to really hit home. It's going to be a really good series, but then we're going to sell it because the renovation of the church, although it's sexy on one side of things, it's not practical for a lot of you, all right? So what we're going to do instead is we're going to finish this one off and go buy right into it. Another three bed, two bath with all kinds of problems from the 60s or 70s. I'm really looking forward to getting dirty on this one. And that's what we're going to do. What were the biggest challenges in renovating a mobile home versus a standard single family? Yeah, the unforeseens. See, when I walk into a house to renovate over the last 30 years, the first 10 years, you don't know what the hell you're doing, right? You bump into every problem. After that, you pretty much figure out, okay, I'll, this is normal. There's no unforeseen. I got experience. I know exactly what I'm going to find when I pull that wall off. Here, it was the unforeseen. I had no idea that they were using quarter-inch vinyl wrap drywall. Problem, because that changes the way that things dry, right? So in my kitchen, for instance, I cut out the old backsplash, put in cement board. Above that, I got quarter-inch vinyl wrap. I can't use adhesive on that. I've actually got to go back with a, a Schluter all set, specially designed 30 buck a bag cement to put my backsplash tile on because I've got a combination of materials that have different drying times and capacity. It's crazy. Uh, my shower in the master bedroom wasn't even attached to the drain. So everything rotted out. There were bugs and it was just a nightmare. Remember, temporary structures don't have the same permitting and inspection process. So you never really know what you get until you open that can of worms, all right? And Daniel says, I thought the church was gonna be a multi-million dollar property. Daniel, it was, but here's the deal. We're not in this YouTube business to become millionaires on the property investment. We're in this YouTube business to try to provide you guys with content that's relative to you to help you become millionaires. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna renovate the average property that the person of today's world can actually afford, which is an old property that's devalued. We're gonna show you how to remodel these properties over the next three to five years, bring them up to their glory. So you can take it from three to five to eight to a million dollars, okay? Depending where you live, the markets are different, but that's the goal. My goal is to find a way to find 10 million homeowners who can remodel their home and get financially free of the crazy economic times that we're in, all right? The church isn't going to do that. And for the first two years, we were screwed because I couldn't get an HVAC system installed. Like, I, honestly, the, the whole pandemic thing really threw a wrench in the works. Uh, if we hadn't had a pandemic, we'd probably done the church by now, and we'd be moving on to something else. But the pandemic really screwed things up. Supply chains, forget about it. That project was way too ambitious for the conditions of the day. We're just moving on. We're going to let somebody else do that project, and that's okay. It's not the end of the world. How much pre-planning has gone into this reno? I'll tell you the pre-planning process. That's a great question. Um, we got a uh, local agent who specializes in mobile homes, okay? Because this is a separate industry. Real estate agents don't do this. It's a separate industry. The whole transaction is $600. There's no percentage off the top, okay? We looked at four houses in the same day. This one and three others. Two of them were in rough shape. One of them had been painted and had access to the lake and had a dock. And it was going for about 50% more than this one. This one was just kind of outdated, but in really great condition. Like the homeowner really took care of the place. I was like, you know what? I love the vaulted ceilings. I love the layout. I love the potential. I love the capacity for making videos. I don't care. I'm just buying it. Done. Moving on. Right? The pre-planning is this. I walk through a property. I've been in this business so long, I can see the finish before I even start. I knew what this place was going to look for, like, relatively speaking, until my wife got involved. And then she said, this color there, this color there. <laughs> but I can basically see the project finish when I walk through the door. And it's just a years of experience, right? Anyway, is the added weight from tile and new subfloors a concern, or are you on concrete there? Mine just has cinder blocks on dirt. Let me tell you something right now. Cinder blocks are a great structure. I have two by six joists. A two by six joist can span five feet with perfect structure capacity. Okay, you can park a truck on that. 
As soon as you go past five feet, you're in trouble. And this double wide, each half has a steel beam running right down the middle. Okay? And that cuts the two by six into the perfect dimension where tile is not a concern. All right? And that's why we did it. Because we're not actually cut in half. We're even on the other side of the hallway. So it's a shorter span than, than the five feet. It actually ends up being like five and a half, almost six feet with a two by six. But with a three quarter plywood and then a little bit extra technology that I threw in there, I'm not too concerned about it because the deflection that I'm experiencing here is so minimal. I'm not worried. All right. Great question. Brian wants to know, I'm sure I missed it. What was the reasoning in going way down to Florida for this project? You know what? I'll be honest with you. Florida's freaking cold. Just joking. Ottawa's cold. Dude, um, try to do a double wide in Ottawa. First of all, they hardly exist. Second of all, half the year you're in miserable weather. Third, um, you know, I'm married and I like to keep my wife happy. Happy wife, happy life. So when I said, hey, baby, uh, what do you say we get ourselves a work visa and we go down to Florida for a year and we try that out and see if we like it? She was all in. So we, we have a truck and a fifth wheel trailer. We've been living in a fifth wheel trailer since December the 15th of last year. All right. She's a trooper. She's at, we're experiencing things. We're trying out the attractions. We're taking day trips on the weekends. We're going to different resorts and different cities. We're experiencing it all. Um, I got to be honest with you. It's, it's hard to find much about Florida. That's a problem. <laughs> it's easy to complain about Ottawa for six months of the year. All right. There we go. Uh, are you going to keep the trailer or fix it up and sell it? Okay. We don't know. I know this much. I'm probably going to be vacationing here this year, and then we'll go from there. I don't know. Have you any idea how crazy my life is? I don't know 60, 90 days in advance of where my life is going. I really don't. That's how crazy things are. Right? Opportunities are presenting themselves on a regular basis. We say no most of them because we don't want to be in anybody's pocket. I want to be able to maintain myself as having my own opinion. Um, but at the same time, there are some brands out there that we, we enjoy working with that, that I love. And we're looking forward to developing and fostering some business relationships. And so it's really hard to have a long-term plan. What we are is we're nimble, right? We can bob and weave. I mean, I can... I can go north, I can go south, I go east, west. It's okay. I'm not stuck in one place because I spent all my money on a studio to make YouTube videos. Dude, I got a, I got a $300 yellow cart stuck in a corner of my trailer right now. That's where I'm filming. You know, I'm nimble as they get, right? And I'll probably end up selling it, you know? Uh, I don't know what my dream is. It's not this, but this will be a nice winter. We could do one winter here. So... If anybody wants to put a bid on it <laughs> after it's all finished, feel free. Corey wants to know, what are some of the biggest differences in building materials between a double wide versus traditional home? Great question. Not a hell of a lot. Listen, the outside of this house is built with two by four. It's one story. No big deal. I know we're going back in time because now everybody wants two by six. Oh, our 20. Oh, the walls. The point is this. Down here in the south, we don't have winter. Okay. So in the south, a two by four wall with a, um, a foil faced exterior board with insulation is more than enough. You have air conditioning. Everything stays dry all the time. There's no need to go overboard. There's no need to go to two by six, right? So our floor joists are a little lightweight, but they've got extra support. And so that works. This place is solid as a rock. Outside of that, the wiring is a little different. Right? Because a lot of the wiring is just attached to the wall panel, not the stud. And that was kind of like that was mind boggling to me that that can happen. What other differences do we have? Well, the ceilings aren't ceilings. They're, 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 they're prefabricated panels. And so that's a little different. But honestly, at the end of the day, um, the ceiling height is fantastic. The air quality is fantastic. Uh, I, I do not have a complaint. I really don't have a complaint. We have places in Canada so far north that they can only put trailers because they don't have a long enough building season. All right. Truth is, Prefabricated homes are a fantastic solution to a housing crisis. The world just needs to get on board and allow for more production and distribution of these things in other regional markets instead of being all greedy wanting to put up million dollar homes. 
We don't have a housing crisis in North America. What we have is a greed crisis. Let me just say that again. 90% of the dirt in North America is not inhabited. We don't have a housing crisis. We have a greed crisis. Builders want to make money. Cities want to charge taxes. Governments want to make money on all the, on all the new development. And that's all it is. That's why everything is so bloody expensive. Anyway, what is the brand of flooring that was used? Patricia? It's a secret. I'm not going to tell you. But I'll tell you this much. We are so pleased with this. This product has actually been referred to me by one of our, our viewers who renovated his house with our videos. He owns a tile store in Missouri. All right. And we are in talks to see if we can arrange some shipments, maybe do some product drops for you and get this into your hands. Because I tell you, I was excited when I first met him. We said, hey, maybe we can do some business. He, we got the product delivered. I'm so excited about this product. It is the greatest product that I've ever installed in my entire life. And it has some of the best product qualities. And it's not all that expensive. The world charges a fortune for stuff when it's not necessary. So maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to do a drop and save you some money. Stay tuned. Keep watching the live shows because sooner or later, you're going to see that thumbnail. Boom. Product drop. We got flooring. It's going to happen. I'll guarantee it. Muscle cars. <laughs> what a great title. Is this unit on wheels? No. And need an inspection sticker from the DMV? No. This is actually um, set on a foundation. And so it is, it is, it is, has the capacity to be moved, but it would require a great deal of effort. <laughs> All right. This is not a tiny house. All right. Cheers. Kirilakos, how much time did you estimate to complete the project? And how are how you are calculating the time between when you started doing renovations and now. Okay, so this is, I get the question. Listen, I started the renovations in January. I was out of town in February for a couple of weeks for a trade show. I was out of town in March because I took my wife on a cruise for a couple of weeks. You know, like, I'm a good husband, right? You got to spoil the lady a little bit once in a while, eh? Um, we've done some weekend trips, blah, blah, blah. Here we are in June. So January, February, March, April, May, June, six months. We've been on two major holidays and four minor holidays, like weekenders. We generally film Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I generally take Mondays for meetings, Friday to clean up and kind of get organized. Wednesday is like a work day off camera for all the stuff that we're not filming, but there's not much because we're filming everything. So this is actually just taking about twice as long as it should have. If I was just contracting and not making videos, I would have been done this renovation in 120 days by myself. I hire somebody, it would have been 70, 80, maybe 90 days. But because I'm doing all of this for you guys, it takes me six to eight months to finish this project up. And that's okay. I'm not in a hurry. We're just trying to make great content to help you guys so that you can make great houses for yourself. All right. Cheers, buddy. Jeremy wants to know, what strategy would you recommend as a DIY strategy? To deal with a steep sloped front yard looking for appearance and utility. Now, steep slope can mean a lot of different things, dude. Like when I did my concrete, I had a mild slope. Um, over the six feet of that concrete, it was level for the first two feet and then it curved and it dropped about four inches. If you have a really steep slope and you wanna know about a DIY strategy, consider throwing in a retaining wall, clean stone, weeping tile, drainage, the whole nine yards, and then raise up the slope so it's a yard that can be used, not just cut, right? Something that's more utilizable. Anyway. I, you'd have to send me a picture. Jeremy, if you're not a member, become a member. Send me a picture. Okay, we can talk about strategies and, and, and construction technology and what's available on the market for you. Uh, don't forget, guys, I have a membership. We have a forum. You guys can send me questions and send pictures. We can upload photos, and I can help you diagnose and solve your problems. All right? Tina Michelle is in the house. Look at you. Tina, it's been a while. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh... Here we go. Yeah, builders. Listen, don't blame builders for the cost of housing. Generally, it's the municipalities and all of the construction fees that go behind all of the, the, the things like um, sewer, septic, the, the power, the grading, the, the water management, the, the, all that other stuff. They charge a fortune for all that nowadays because every level of government is broke, and so everything is unrealistic. If you want to build a house off-grid, you can build half the price of building brand new on-grid. I'm just saying it's gotten ridiculous. All right. 
Anyway, Gus, hey Jeff, what product do you recommend for drywall joints? <laughs> Cuban. No. Hey, dude, I have no idea. Um, when it comes to joints, uh, uh, regular joints, butt joints, inside corners, regular all purpose drywall compound. Anything where you're going over top of uh, a, a trim tex or a metal corner bead or something like that, do the first coat in a 45 minute compound, quick dry mud that you mix yourself with water, okay? It makes it so much stronger. We're gonna make a video, actually that post in the beginning of the video, we're gonna wrap that and put on trim tex and show you how to finish off round corner texture, the details, the trims, it's gonna be awesome. Great source of information in one little video. I'm going to do that as soon as I get back from Canada in a couple of months. All right. Rob wants to know, are you thinking of putting in mini split AC units? Don't need it. I got central air here, my friend. This house is absolutely fantastic when the air conditioning works. <laughs> right now, today, it actually, it's, it's busted a gut. I got a technician coming out tomorrow to tell me what's wrong. I'm not familiar with using AC all day, every day for a year. Like, I have no idea what's going on around here. We use our air conditioning for like six weeks in the summer in Canada. Up down here, it's like always on. I'm probably behind on my maintenance schedule. It's probably my bad, but he'll be here to fix me up. Uh, no need for mini splits. Uh, in this particular environment, we've got air conditioning duct system all through the ad, all through the ceiling here, and it's not a problem. All righty. Uh, John Tyler, have you moved any interior walls on the double wide? How much trouble is this to do? Wanting to move two walls on mine. Well, John, it all comes down to if it's structural or not, right? So just consider on a double wide right down the middle, that's structural. Measure from the outside wall to outside wall, everything down there is structural. Everything else is movable, all right? When they put these things together with one by threes and staples, okay? So like, don't be shy. <laughs> it's not that difficult. The biggest secret and trick here is to maintain all of your electrical code up to code and be able to put the wire in the right place. And, and in a lot of cases, homeowners, you can get your own permit down in Florida to do electrical, but you got to get an inspection. All right. If you're going to be moving electrical, you need inspection. All right. Cheers. Ah, the science of being outdoors. How would you handle a transition from one room to the next if you aren't sure what the next material will be? Yeah, see, I'm more of a know the end from the beginning kind of guy. But if you're not sure, don't put a transition. What you do is if your door is this thick, you stop your flooring uh, half an inch inside that confine of that door so that your transition molding, if you end up using one, is underneath the door. That's it, okay? So if you're not sure where you're going to go with things, install your transition underneath the door so it's hidden. So you can't see the other flooring when the door is closed. That's the only secret there is. And that's how you DIY like a pro. So cheers, buddy. Mm. Joe wants to know, he's got a cape roof house with a second floor, flat dormer and slim crawl space, attic above stairs, living area, gable vent, each end posing in hot upstairs in the summer, put a gable attic fan, ridge vent, other idea. Dude, when you got a house that's that complicated, your biggest enemy is insulation, okay? Honestly, if you, and, and that leads me to my favorite question of the week. We're gonna get into that next before we answer any more questions. But let me just say this. The more, the more convoluted your roof line is, the more challenging your situation is to keep your house cool, okay? So back in the day when these houses were built, they weren't concerned about perfection. They were concerned about aesthetic. Everybody's trying to be creative. Oh, that's a sexy house from the street, but it didn't function well. Complicated roof lines don't function well. They're not insulated properly. They don't have good air return. They don't have good air quality. The best thing you can do is manage your system by closing the physical grates and forcing your air to go to a different part of the house. That's the best way to do it. There's really no other answer. Now, before we go any further in the questions, guys. And Yinzer, no, sandy soil doesn't require drainage. It is drainage. My favorite question that I got this week was from somebody who has a two-story house. Here's the ground. Here's their basement. That is a lousy marker. All right. And here's the first floor. 
Here's the second floor. And they've got an air conditioner that's pumping air through the house. And the first floor is super cold. The second floor is hot. Okay? And they're trying to figure out, they've been calling AC companies over to try to sort it out. And they're like, hey, how do we fix this mess? Because whenever the AC, because it's a split system, so they got a thermostat up here and they got a thermostat down here. And whenever this thermostat turns on, okay, this thermostat says, hey, we're just fine. <laughs> it's a mess, right? Here's what I said. You got a couple of factors going on. A, guys, when you send me a question to my members forum, you have to tell me how old your house is. You have to tell me where you live. I can only guess. Like, I can only get 35% close if you don't tell me where you live and how old your house is. Because construction technology and geography count when we're dealing with building science. I said, maybe you don't have enough insulation. So the sun is radiating and heating up upstairs, but down here it's not getting to you because you have a second floor covering the roof. Okay, simple. And then I said, what if you were to put a fan in the ceiling on the second floor or exhaust it outside? Right? You get a Panasonic, it's super quiet. It can move, uh, I don't know, 400 CFM, right? Boom, you could exhaust all that hot air, get it out of the building. Now, in your, in your upstairs room, do you have cold air returns near the ground or was it newer and built near the ceiling? If, do you have cold air at all? Do you have a door and this little gap underneath the door is your cold air return going down the stairs and there's a big grate in the front? I don't know. I don't have the age of that. And if you have this grate only and that's the cold air return, might have suggested that in the summertime, you put a magnet on this one and you get your drywall knife out and you cut a hole up here and you put a new grill so that you're pulling hot air from the top of the ceiling through your system and pumping cold air into your room. That way you can balance your house. Hopefully that helps some of you. That was my question of the week. I wanted to share, there's more than one answer. So if you're gonna ask a question about a house, it's gotta be treated like a patient. I need to know some stuff about your patient. I need to know how old he is. I need to know what, what, what's the condition, right? I need to know where you live. What kind of four season climate are you dealing with? All these things really super help. So even in the comments tonight, if you ask me a question, how old's your house? Where do you live? This kind of stuff makes a big difference, okay? Because the answer to what to do in a basement in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, versus California in San Diego is totally freaking different. And if you don't tell me where you live and how old your house is, I have no idea how to help. Yeah, all right. Let's take another question here real quick. Ah, oh, my goodness. Mm. And you know what, just for fun? Yeah, what the heck, let's do it. Because the last live show, I said I was gonna take questions. I never did. So let's take some live questions. Because maybe, just maybe, taking live questions gives me the ability to ask questions and have some dialogue and really dial in, right? So if you have got questions and you want to have a conversation, don't be shy. I don't bite, okay? The number is 352-901-6994. I had to read it off my old whiteboard here. Give me a ring. Ask me questions, let me know what you think. I don't even know if this thing is working. I didn't test it earlier, but I'm pretty sure if I plug it in, it works. And we will go from there. Um, first of all, mobile homes. See, it's working. Fantastic. Ah, we're learning some new technology. All right, hello, Jeff here. And that didn't work. Oh boy. Try calling me back. I gotta see if I can make that work. Uh oh. We're having technical difficulties here. All right, somebody else call me. Let's find out if we can make this phone work. 352-901-6994. <laughs> Mobile homes have a two by six floor joist. Won't you have problems in the future with cracking on the bathroom floor tile? No, because my bathroom has got a steel structure right down the middle of that floor joist which dissipates the span of that joist to less than four feet. Less than four feet can carry structural load without deflection. So I'm fine. 
Let's try this. No, nope, that didn't work. Jeff here, hello. Oh, are you the program? Yes, dear, you got me. What can I do to help you out tonight? Um, okay. Um, do you have a question? Yes, I do. I'm, okay, so I have a farmhouse that built in 1872. Wow, nice. And, and where are you? Yes, I have a farmhouse that was built in 1872, and I need to decide if I can renovate it. You want to know if a house built in 1872 is worth putting the time and energy into? I get it. That's a, that's a damn good question. Have you seen my series on my farmhouse that I did on my channel a couple years ago? Yes, I have seen that. So 1880 is not much different than 1872. Right, I the, watched the whole thing. So the biggest question is, what's your foundation like? Yeah, it's limestone. Ah, so you've got a lot of movement and sagging. Right. Okay. See, the difference is, is my 1880 farmhouse was built out of granite. So if you're limestone, are you in southern Ontario? Um, I don't believe so, no. Okay. What, where, what part of the country are you in? So it's the middle of Kansas. Middle of Kansas. Okay. Northern, northern Kansas. All right. And the problem is I can't find any contractors, um, anybody to come out. Right. So that's why I've been watching your videos. Yes. And um, one thing I... I think somebody said this to get a structural engineer. Well, I don't know that that's going to happen. Well, I'll tell you, structural engineers aren't scary people. They're, they're... I don't know, but they're not going to come to the middle of Kansas is my problem. Oh, okay. You're in a small town. Yeah. Okay. So this is part of the problem with, with, with rural living, right? We don't get enough respect. I <laughs> get it. All right. All right. So here's the thing. When... Have you, have you ever bought a laser level that drops a horizontal line? Yes. Okay. If you put it in the middle of your living room, how much difference in height is it from the outside wall to the middle of the room? Okay. That would be something I could do. Is what yeah. You're and here's my guideline. Okay. If the outside of the house is less than six inches difference in the middle of the room, okay, your house isn't in that bad of a condition. And I'll be honest with you, my farmhouse was five, and I had granite, which meant that the interior of the house was softer than the exterior walls. So all I needed to do was build up the interior structure to meet the walls. In your house, you might need to do the opposite, or you might need to do both. The point is this. If you were to take a look at your farmhouse, is it a two-story, probably like a three-bedroom? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Bath. One bath. And if you were to take a look at it, you probably have a, a, a living room, a dining room, and a den or a study or something like that, right? Yeah, it will. The, the original house, yeah, the original house um, is, yeah, the living room, dining room, and bedroom. And then they, they've added on a bedroom and a kitchen. Okay. Well, there. Listen, I, I don't want to take all night to, to discuss your particular yeah, yeah. situation, but if you want to join our membership program, you can send me a quick sketch. Take a, draw us a quick sketch. Take those measurements on your floor plan. Show me some pictures from inside and outside. Upload them onto our forum for me, and I can help diagnose what I think your best course of action should be. So you don't have to waste a ton of money getting other opinions. Perfect. Okay. I think the thing that might be helpful for everyone is just what you do when, with the foundation. So that would, that's the main, main question, I think. So totally. Very much. And what you need to understand is on old houses, the foundation is only holding up the exterior of the house. The interior of the house is on the, on, on, it's on the interior foundation wall. There's a double wall system. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank and you. Thank you, dear. Thank so so much. consider that, and I'd be happy to help. All right? All right. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. There we go. That's, that's tough, man. But listen, older houses, they're like that. So if you need help diagnosing, I mean, I, I, I love this stuff, man. This is my bread and butter. I love old houses. I will do that all day long. I will sit down. I will diagnose. I will help you out. 
old houses can be saved, okay? And even if they're in a rural area, it doesn't mean that they're not salvageable. It doesn't mean they're not valuable. The biggest problem we have in this North American continent right now is we take a look at an old house and we go, ugh, it's useless. Next, build me a new one. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Houses can last for hundreds of years. If you just start throwing them all out, that's a mess. All right. Anyway, if you got a question, you want to call 352-901-6994. Let's go back to the questions here. See what else we got. Ann Baker says she's got a 1982 single wide skyline. Is it difficult to replace one of the metal panel siding pieces? Hello, Jeff here. Hello. Hello. You're live on Home Renovation DIY. What can I do to help oh, you? Okay. It's recording a little differently. Um, I had, I just had one question. Yes. We have to re we have, we have to reintrate the uh, underside of our mobile home, which is over twenty years old. Yeah, I get it. In central Missouri. Yep. Uh, what do you recommend using? You know what? Reinsulating the underside of your home. Are you going to do it yourself, or are you going to hire somebody? No, this is a this is a complete DIYer. We are good for you because they're going to charge you ten thousand bucks. So here's the deal: yeah. you are fine using any kind of fiberglass insulation. The best one on the market right now is from Fiberglass Pink. They make a soft touch that doesn't get itchy. So if you're crawling around in a crawl space and you want a good insulation for that environment. This new product from Fiberglass Pink isn't itchy. It doesn't have a lot of um, uh, fibers that float around in the air. It's not going to get a scratchy throat. You can pretty much do That's most of the insulation with a paper right? mask, right? You don't have to have any special safety gear. You're going to be just fine. Okay? That'll work. And you, and you wouldn't necessarily recommend, like, the spray foam or whatever, because, I mean, we do have mice and other things that we got to like, kind of try to seal out. Yeah, I get it. And so if you want spray foam, darling, and you're doing it yourself, you're going to spend more money than if you hire a spray foam contractor. Uh, I kind of thought so. <laughs> yeah, because they've, they've, they've priced us out of the market. We can only buy stupid little kits. We can't buy large bulk. All right. Yeah. So if you're worried about mice, then consider using like a mineral wool or a rock sole, okay? Because the mice don't like eating through that. It's, a, it's basically a spun granite product. But Okay, Roxel. Yeah. All right. And that's also not too terrible to work with. You're going to want to wear glasses and gloves with it. But, uh, you know, one quick semi cold shower and you'll be good to go. Yeah, we pretty much like just those products on our tiny house that we did. Yeah. Now we're just moving back into the big one because my husband has to stop. <laughs> I get it. Life happens. But listen, you're going to be yeah. okay. You, you go and put mineral wool in there and the mice will leave you alone. All right, thank you, darling. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay. That is a real thing, you know? Yeah, I get it. Wow. Mice. Bloody hell. My kingdom for getting rid of mice. Mm. All right. Hello, Jeff here. What can I do to help you? Oh, hi, Jeff. Thanks for taking the call. Um, my name is Brandon. I have a bit of an uncomfortable question, if you don't mind. <laughs> Uh, yeah. well, give me a second to recover from that phrase. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, buddy. Uh, I don't want to be offensive, but uh, I have a house in northeast Pennsylvania. Uh, it's built in 1990. Okay. Uh, so, you know, within the past 30 years. And I, I have issues with air quality. Yes. Specifically uh, dust. Okay. And, you know, you go looking on the internet, you can find any different. Oh, yeah, you can find everything from don't worry to you're going to die. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then I start reading about, and again, I don't want to sound offensive or anything, but Chinese drywall. Yes, it has been a problem. Okay. But Chinese drywall is not linked to problems with dust. Okay. All right. The Listen, listen let's face it. I can't run away from this question. The Chinese put melamine in their own baby formula. Okay. And if they forget that, then they need to go back five years ago and read the damn news. Now, I don't know what's going on with Chinese products. There's some great products out there that get hit the market and, and do us a great favor and save us a lot of money. But 
at the end of the day, if you're concerned about quality, you're exactly where you are right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you got Chinese drywall in your house, you think. Or you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know for sure. And that's, okay. you know, the farther you look into the internet, the crazier answers you get. <laughs> okay, so you got <laughs> dust in your house. Guys before. You know, dust in your house might just be from sloppy contractors who didn't clean up at the end of the day. They put layer on layer, and it keeps on puffing out every time you walk on your floor. This is a very normal thing. Okay, so let's let's not overreact. What I would suggest you do is take some of that sample of dust, take it down to the um, the lab and have it analyzed, if you're concerned. Okay. The same place that you would go test for asbestos or anything else, you can test that. If you want to put okay. your mind at ease, you can pay for a simple test, and you can find out, is this dust dangerous, or is this just lazy? Okay. Okay? And, and I get it. I understand, man. Like the world can be an absolute overwhelming mess, right? Uh, just mainly for the kids. You know, yeah, I, I get it. They're not growing up with uh, asthma. If there's something I can do about it now. Yeah, you're a good dad. So have it tested. And if they say we don't test for that, say, what's it cost? They'll say 75 bucks. <laughs> Pay the 75, yeah. buy your peace of mind, and move on with your life. And you'll be okay. Excellent. All right, my friend. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. My pleasure, buddy. Cheers. Right, thank you. Bye-bye. Wow. Yeah, that's the real thing. Like, you know, here we go, guys. It's five to six. We're almost out of time. I don't mind going a little bit long today because it's just us. So if you got a question, hit me up. Hello, Jeff here. What can I do to help you? Hey, I live in the community and I have the exact same house. Shut up. You're watching this live stream from Lakes of Leesburg? Yes, we are. We're right around the corner. (laughs) (laughs) All right, this will be fun. All right, hit me up. Okay, okay so our do you, dryer do you is where have, your office is at. Do you have that kitchen that kind of like L shapes and then goes down yeah. for like wheelchair it's, accessibility? Yeah, it's the exact, exact same house. Gotcha. Ours is this. We don't have the paneling. And we, we've done everything. Mm-hmm. But we found after we lived here maybe six years, our washer and dryer is where your office is at. Right. The venting was going underneath the house. Yes, not a good thing. So it is, or is, it is or it is not. It's fine as long as there's no holes in the venting. Okay, there wasn't. What okay. we ended up doing was my husband bought this thing, and I think that they use it in apartments. Better vent. It's, it, what's it called? Better vent. It's a, called a better vent, and okay. we use that now, but we do open the door that goes out to the um, Florida room. Yes. You know, is that okay, too? Yeah. No, no, that's not a problem. What we did in this unit is we had the laundry moved to the outside storage room. Uh huh. And and the we, hot we water actually, tank as well. We've actually been in that house. Yeah, so we actually eliminated the need for any concern with a hot water tank failure, or a, uh-huh. a washer overflow, or anything else inside this structure uh-huh. because it's all over concrete now. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was my question, and welcome to the neighborhood. Hey, thanks. Cheers. And by the way, when we're done, (laughs) when we're done this property, we're going to have an open house, invite the neighborhood over just to check it out. Oh, great. We'll be there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, darling. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Who would have figured (laughs) someone from the local neighborhood is actually on the phone in my live stream. Oh, that is just too much fun. Uh, Yeah. It's called a Florida room if you're in Florida. It's, It's a Lanai or a Florida room. If you're in Texas, it's a Texas room. I don't know what they call it there. All right. All right. Hey, it's Jeff here. You're calling from the area code 210. Where's that? South Texas. South Texas. Here we go. What can we do to help you, buddy? Uh, I'm calling because I added a bathroom fan to my 1970s, 75-ish bathroom. And uh, ever since I added it about a year ago, there's these little spider web sacks in the ceiling drywall compound. Yep. And I'm trying to figure out the way to deal with them. Uh, I don't know if I should just try to skim coat the drywall to cover them up or if I should use like a triple thick primer. So you added a bathroom fan and now your drywall's cracked. Yeah, it's like these little spider web cracks. Mm. All right. throughout the mud that I put around the drywall patching and stuff. Mm-hmm. Installed the fan. 
That's really interesting. What kind of paint did you use to finish that off? Uh, I used, oh gosh, the Glidden Peamer. Okay. And then I used, hold on, I think I've got the can right here. It's good to know. Oh, uh, oh no, I used the Zinser primer. Mm -hmm. and Zinser I primer. Do not have the, I do not have the ceiling paint anymore. I must have run out. Okay. Was it 100% acrylic? It should have been, I believe. Okay. And you're still getting cracking. Yeah, it's these little spider webs. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this right now. It's not a drywall issue. It's a paint issue. Oh, okay. 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 Spider web cracks in drywall are not structural, especially in the ceiling. 